Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. Oh, well, go on then. What happened at the Battle of Drakenmoor between Sigmar Heldenhammer and Drakenfels, this great enchanter? Why, it will be my pleasure. The Battle of Drakenmoor in the 11th year of the Imperial Calendar. So, after organising their lines, the armies of Sigmar and Drakenfels stared each other down, each general assessing the situation and seemingly waiting for the other to make the first move. Oh, but uh, why did Drakenfels not attack as soon as he could? He had the numbers and had come upon Sigmar unready. Ah! Spoken like a true soldier, my dear knight. Well, the prevailing theory centers on the unreliability of his own troops. At one end of the spectrum, it took a large portion of Drakenfell's willpower and concentration to maintain a leash on his fearless demonic forces to prevent them charging off into the enemy at the first opportunity and thus exposing his right flank. The great enchanter also knew that with any sort of mishap, especially something like a flank charge from the Imperial Knights, and his goblin forces would melt away like morning dew. It was for this reason that his demonic cavalry had to be held back to form the backbone of a counter charge. If he lost control of them, then the battle too was lost. He did, at least, as you said, have the numbers. However, the Imperial, uh, but, uh, well, more so the Dwarf forces facing Drakenfels, had plenty of experience fighting goblins and the other denizens of the Darklands, and after proffering their advice to the Emperor, they were given free reign to try and sow some panic amongst their enemies' ranks. Thus did the dwarves bring their cannons forward, lining them up between the lines of ranked cavalry, and they immediately peppered the battle lines of the goblins across from them. Unfortunately, their shots fell just short, and although it sent a few goblins scampering for cover, it did not cause the hoped-for panic, and to add ill luck to embarrassment, before the gunners could refine the precision of their next bombardment, a foul plume of ashen smoke tumbled across the battlefield, obscuring their targets. Nevertheless, the cannon fire had made the goblin wolf riders on the left flank jittery, and under the cover of the roiling smoke in front of them, Boss Scroxnick on his wolf chariot led his moon howler's tribe forwards.
Damn those wolf riding imbecile greenskins! What is Skrosnik doing? I gave no order to charge! However, just as quickly as the smoke that now concealed them had arrived, it dissipated, leaving the hasty maneuver exposed. I've no doubt the captain of the archers grinned widely. Archers! Fire! However, the wolf riders endured the hail of arrows and quickly closed the distance between themselves and the elite knights of the Empire who stood between them and the object of their ire, the dwarf cannons. Such a charge should neither have made it across the field of battle nor reached the enemy, but it did. And, truth be told, the attack had caught the knights off guard. They had been the ones expecting to do the charging, but rather it was Skroxnik and his wolf riders who were causing mayhem. Yeah, slice the gizzards, boys! The savagery of the wolves and their riders actually forced the knights back, and... Behind, more and more goblins were pouring forwards, driving home their unexpected advantage. This, though, did not last long. <laughs> the warrior eternal of the two togans, Renweird, led a small cohort of Knights of the White Wolf to countercharge the Wolf Riders in the flank, and they smashed into the frenzied formation and took the wind out of their charge. Death to the Greenskins! This allowed the main body of Knights to regain the initiative and stabilize their line. However, Drakenfels saw what was happening and ordered his remaining goblins towards the melee, before unleashing his demonic cavalry on the opposing left flank and centre of Sigmar's army. The iron was hot. The time to strike was now. Blood for the blood god! But even as the demons charged headlong towards the men and dwarves, the goblins were crumpling under the sharp weapons of the Knights of the Empire and the blunt trauma weapons of their dwarf allies. The charge had already been broken, and now the goblins were beginning to flee. <laughs> It is said that Skroxnik clambered out of his chariot and over the backs of his fellow wolf riders to get away from the slaughter. With his departure, the remaining units on the flank finally broke and fled with the jubilant Knights of the Empire in hot pursuit. <laughs> This was disastrous for Drakenfels, but there was worse to come. On the Empire's left flank, the Imperial Spearmen and Halberdiers, as well as the Dwarf Hammerers and Ironbreakers, took the demonic charge. Scores of warriors being crushed beneath iron hooves, and scores more falling to demonic blades. But... Nonetheless, they did not break, weathering the assault as only the most hardy of veterans could. The Enchanter had counted on nothing surviving the charge, 
And yet, there was worse to come for the great enchanter. Sigmar too was not idle at this juncture, and, seeing an opening, he and his Reichsguard charged across the battlefield, straight towards the figure of Drakenfels on his zombie dragon. There! The neck is exposed. Let us give it the blade it so desires. The timing was perfect. Death was all around. Man, dwarf, goblin, and demon fell. Blood was spilt by the gallon and the air shimmered with dissipating Neverborn. But the arrogant Drakenfels saw no danger and instead he smiled to see his prey coming closer and closer. <laughs> All too easy. Kneel, Sigmar. Kneel before your new master now. And with this, the Enchanter raised up his arms and gestured towards the Emperor. But nothing happened. Sigmar did not stop in his tracks. He did not waver in his charge, nor did his warhammer Galmaraz even quiver in his grasp. Instead, the runes upon it glowed brighter still. What? What is this? I never foresaw this! The charge reached its target. The lances of the Knights of the Reichsguard broke upon the bones of Drakenfell's dragon, shattering many of them and tearing others from its body. As the hooves of their mounts crushed the thirteen undead bodyguards of the Great Enchanter, the undead dragon reeled and lashed out in response, slaying what knights it could reach. But it was Sigmar that acted next, leaping from his horse, Galmaraz too arcing high above him as he threw himself at the great enchanter and brought his weapon down upon his head, smashing it from the ancient revenant's shoulders and slaying Drakenfels in a single swipe. And so, this was the first true defeat that Drakenfels had ever suffered in his long, long life. And with the loss of their leader, his army too collapsed. Those that could, fled. Those that either could or would not, died where they stood. The victory was complete. Oh, yeah, yeah, huzzah! Victory for the Empire! Oh, indeed. A great and apparently final victory. But Drakenfels's evil never vanished. <laughs>